All right, so this is one of the most popular and most annoying plays in Madden 24. But if we just simply put our outside corner in a hard flat, we're going to stop this play pretty much every single time and it won't get another yard on us. Whether you're trying to defend against corner routes or you're trying to stop RPOs or under center runs, whatever it might be, this video is going to give you the formula and all the tools you need to be able to stop every single thing in the game. Now, I'm really big on transparency and by no means am I the best Madden player in the world, but I've won tens of thousands of dollars playing this game. I've been on ESPN streams. I've been on EA streams. I've beaten the best Madden players in the world and I've been ranked as one of the best Madden players in the world. I've also been doing this for like five years. So I've seen a lot of different stuff and I kind of just don't have a life. So I I want you to get better at Madden. I want you to have more fun playing Madden. This route right here is the bane of any Madden player's existence on defense. It's a corner route, and people seem to want to use them on huge crucial downs, like third down and fourth down when they need a big chunk play. And I mean, dude, they are they feel like they're impossible to defend a lot of times. You can see this route combo right here. Hardman's on the corner route. And when I call it, I mean it's just it just gets to an area of this of, of the field where it's so hard to throw and it develops pretty fast where usually you won't be able to get a hit on the quarterback like we did right there. But there are a few ways I want to show you guys how to defend this. I am in the 4-6 defensive playbook, but that honestly is irrelevant. I want to teach you guys concepts that you can use in any playbook, any scheme, any anything, any Madden even, okay? So the first way I love to defend corner routes is by simply taking a zone coverage, right, and use one of my yellow zones in the middle of the field. This could be a hook curl. This could be a mid read. It could be a vert hook, something like that. But take that guy and man him up onto the dude I think is running the corner route. So the way we're going to do that is tapping A or X on PlayStation up on the right stick for man coverage. And then tap the icon or the receiver who you think is going to run that corner route. So in this case, I think they keep on throwing the corner route to Miko Hardman, number 12 here. So we're going to man him up like that. Okay. Now, if we run the same route combo, you're going to see how this corner route is going to get significantly more bracketed just by that. And mind you, this is a linebacker on him, and that easily could be a pick right there. You can see how that's going to bracket it. Now, does that mean it's going to totally defend it every single time? No. One of the downsides of man coverage is that man coverage can, can get beaten by corner routes. And we have Jack Campbell here, who is just not a very good man coverage player, right? Man coverage is, you know, you, you could still throw this. But you see how hard of a throw that is even against a linebacker like that. That's going to take a lot of skill from the offensive player. So right there, we went from just allowing a very, very, very easy dot, which looked like this right here, right? If we go back to it without the man up, that was super easy. Anybody can throw this. To with the man up, we're going to need a lot more precision with our throw. It's going to bracket it a lot better. But there's a few other options I love to use to be able to stop corner routes. I want to give you guys a bunch of tools in your tool bag, a lot of different ways to skin the cat as my old high school, old man Evans, uh, high school football coach used to say. So for this way to stop corner routes, we're going to go into our coaching adjustments and go to auto alignment and turn this to base. This is going to do something called base align, which is going to keep your defense in the exact same alignment no matter what formation they come out in on offense. And there's a lot of advantages to that. So let's here actually just go to something like, where can we go? We'll just go to dime. Why not? And we'll call cover four or cover three for this version, okay? So I'll call cover four quarters here. What I want to do is pinch everything. So it's going to be right bumper or R1 on PlayStation, and then down the left stick. That is going to pinch the entire defense. And what you're going to see here is that we have these deep outside zones, these outside quarters, or in cover three, be an outside third out here. And what he's going to do is that he's going to back up pretty slowly and going to play this area of the field unless somebody pushes him back like a streak or something. So... What that means is that he's going to do a good job against corner routes, essentially, okay? And if we watch this right here, we can kind of see where we go to throw B, and you see how bracketed that is and it actually gets swatted away. That's going to take another very precise throw to be able to fit in there. It's one of the best ways that you're going to be able to stop corner routes, right? I can show you how you can fit that throw in there, something like this, but even that is right on the sidelines and super, super tight. But you're saying, Civil, what if somebody is able to fit that ball in on me right there? What do I do? Why not just combine that with the previous thing I said? So what if we go to something like this, take our yellow zone right here, and man him up onto the guy who's running the corner routes, okay? And in this case, you know, number 11 keeps on running corner routes on us. So we'll just say that's our opponent's tendency. So we man him up. Now we're, our defense looks like this. And watch what the corner route does here. It's going to get super bracketed. Boom. And actually, he ends up cooking the man coverage, which could happen. We'll do it again. though. But you kind of get the idea how that is going to bracket it. And we're going to be able to slow down corner routes a ton. And all it takes is just one misread from the defense. And we're able to take advantage, right? Let's go back to this right here again. See, boom. 
And now we're, we're if someone wants to beat you throwing that consistently, it's gonna be a long, long, long day at the office, right? And you could also man this guy up like this, uh, one of your hook curls from the inside, same idea. Let's go back to it now. Corner route from MVS. Boom, gotta take a super precise throw and he's getting hit as he catches it. It's gonna be super, super, super tight and we're able to combine things and eventually you're going to be able to get picks off of this. This is the main way that I stop corner routes in online head-to-head -head gameplay. I love that little strategy right there. But I have one more way for you guys actually and it's something that we're gonna to do to utilize zone drops. So we're gonna turn our flats to 25 here. That's typically where corner routes will go. And then we want to run a cover two, okay? So we go to do this. Now watch what happens to this corner route in this case. Our flats are at 25. Boom. You're going to see that corner route going right to our DB. Now why is that happening? Well, our flats are set to 25, which means this guy right here is going to drop back to about 25 yards or so. Now if you want to make this a little bit better, you could back off your coverage. This is a little bit more advanced, but you're going to hit wire triangle. A or X on PlayStation, and then the icon of the receiver, the DB is over, and then back in the left stick. And you see how Mosley backed up a couple steps right there? It's a little bit more advanced. I don't recommend doing that unless you are advanced. But if we go to this now, you see the corner route is bagged. That's just a pick waiting to happen. And you'll be able to see how in all of these coverages, we've been able to bracket these receivers pretty well, right? We can go back to, you know, the cover three, and let's say we want to man this guy up with Anzalone. Let's see what Anzalone is able to do in man coverage. He's underneath him. Bang, we're able to throw it, and that's an easy pick waiting to happen. If you're the defensive user, you're able to click on and pick it. That is three different ways that we're going to be able to stop corner routes. So I mentioned earlier, one of the best ways to stop an RPO out of a compressed formation like this right here, you see we're in the gun bunch strong, and the RPO is like this, is simply putting your outside corner in a hard flat. And that is true. It's going to do a really good job. You can see it right here where we have a potential for a pick, a pick six, a tackle for a loss, a deflection, whatever, right? That's a very easy way. Whenever you're playing a compression type formation and you think they're going to run RPO, put your outside corner in a hard flat. It's going to do a great job. But what do you do against like a spread RPO style, right? Like something like this right here that will audible to, which is very popular. Uh, we're in trips tight and offset week. This is the Philadelphia Eagles playbook if you're interested. And we have a guy running an RPO from the inside. He's running this little bubble from the inside. He's going to be able to get a lot of yards right there. What do we do here? Well, I use a strategy very similar to what we've done with defending corner routes, and that is simply manning the guy up, utilizing one of our yellow zones. So, again, formation here doesn't matter. Any of that stuff really does not matter. The key here is that we take one of our yellow zones and man him up onto the dude we think is going to be running the RPO. So we do it just like this. And now if we call this RPO, we throw this. See, Jack Campbell right there able to make the tackle super easily. And it's as simple as that, right? It really, it like doesn't need to be any more complicated. But what would it like if we did something like this? How would you defend this right here? Well, they're even though they're out wide, they're in a compressed, they're in a compressed set just out wide. So one of the easiest ways for me would be, I would immediately see, can I just hard flat the outside corner? Does this stop it? In this case, it does. But there's also another way to stop this where we can use literally what I just said for a couple plays ago to stop this style too, which is simply man up a yellow zone onto the guy who's the RPO. And typically the RPO guy, if it's a bubble, it's going to be the inside guy. And if it's going to be some kind of screen, it's going to be the outside guy. So in this case, I know it's going to be the inside guy probably. I know this formation. So we'll just man up Anzalone here. Boom. Anzalone is going to jet out there. And now we get, you know, numerous hats over there. Anzalone doesn't make the tackle, but he does take up a block. And I've been in the nickel over formation for this, but the concept, boys, applies to so, 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 so much. We can do the same thing out of dollar here, and all the stuff works. Now, there is a little bit of a hot fix that I like to do for when somebody kind of randomly audibles to something, and I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't know what they're doing. Are they about to call an RPO? And that's why if we're using a middle linebacker, I like to just take him and run out here and say, nope, no RPO. I will use this RPO if you try throwing it, and we are th there. I don't love doing that. But that is something I would do to make people scared of throwing the RPO, of just hopping on this dude, or even hopping on this guy. RPOs always go the way of the halfback, so halfback right means probably going to throw an RPO right, and then we could be right there. That is a very short-term hotfix that does work at a pretty high level, 
and it takes a lot of adjusting out. We're just usering somebody. So if you're somebody who just wants to sit in stock coverages and you're like, oh my gosh, they're going to run another RPO on me, right? Let's say they're going to this one. Oh my goodness. I just want to sit in my coverage and not have to worry about RPOs. Well, you could hop on a slot corner or somebody out here. And when they go to snap this ball, you could get in here. That's a pretty easy way to stop a lot of the RPO stuff. Stopping shotgun runs is actually a little bit easier than you might think. If we snap this ball right here, we're going to see a very basic inside zone that we don't get any kind of yardage on. But I want to show you kind of the fundamentals that immediately go behind my thinking of stopping any kind of shotgun run every single year. And you can do this out of a bunch of formations. But I am going to specifically be in dollar, and I'm going to call it DB Fire 2 for this. And the reason behind it is because blitzing slot corners do a really, really, really good job at stopping the run. Okay, they just do. That branch right here, I like to pinch everything. Branch right here is going to do a good job of coming off the edge and forcing the running back back in. And then on the right side, Harris right here is going to do a good job of taking away cutback lanes. Okay, so just by default, having slot corners blitzing will do a good job against the run. And, you know, we could do this out of a cover three shell, you know, or cover six in this case. You do it from a bunch of different stuff. Now, a little bit more advanced is that shotgun runs almost always cross the quarterback's face. What do I mean by this? If I'm looking at this run, Pacheco is on the right, but the run's going to the left. And shotgun runs almost always go cross. So the halfback starts on one side, and then he runs to the other side. Very rarely are they downhill. There's a few, they're just not super popular. So in that case, I want to user the middle linebacker on the halfback side, and then I'm looking to actually loop around, almost like a stunt, and get into the gap that he's trying to run. He's trying to run too, okay? And I can kind of show you what that looks like right here. It's going to be a little bit difficult to controllers. But we want to kind of try to do something like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to affect the offensive line blocking where they're going to allow people to come free or your user will be able to come free, okay? Now, if we want to take that a step further, we could pinch our defensive line. We could slant them inside. So left, or I'm sorry, left on the D-pad, down the right stick, slant inside. And now if we get right here and they go to run inside zone, we can loop across and just by slanting inside, it's going to blow up that inside zone. It's going to keep all of our guys going in. And if you watch our slot corners here, let's see what they actually did. In this case, this guy got picked up, so he didn't do a great job of coming free. But on the backside, we stop any sort of backside cut. And you see 25's pursuit down the line was actually really, really good. Now, what if they're running like an RPO thing, right? What if they're doing like an RPO, you know, this, that? Well, if I'm afraid of that, maybe I do something like man this guy up onto him user this guy hop on the back side right hop on the half back side and now this is going to stop both of those things right boom we're going to be there with our user now we just left the read option technically but even that we we're able to rally to it can get somewhat confusing but if you can start to predict when people are going to run you can set up decent run defense and if you can get good with this user loop that i i've gotten really good at let's see right there we get backside penetration from the slant inside in hutchinson you can get good with the user loop, and you get good at knowing when to blitz your slot corners to help with the run. Oh my gosh, you'll stop the run. You'll make them have to pass the ball. There's that slant inside. I love Dollar for shotgun run defense. It's just so good. But you can do this out of a few different things. I've done this for a few years now. The backside thing, you do not want a user on this side. Because if I do, they're usually going to end up hitting me. I'm not going to be able to loop around and affect the running back's path. Right there, we're able to do a good job still stopping the run. So it's going to be a little bit harder. If you're playing against somebody who's running a lot of one-play touchdowns on you, which is something that I do love to add into my game because I think it's a great way just to make offense really easy for yourself, there's a few different things we can do to help prevent in or prevent one-play touchdowns. The easiest of them is simply if you know that they're trying to run a one-play touchdown to one side of the field, like let's say in this case, oh, I know he wants to run one-play touchdown me to the right side of the field. I'll take whatever deep zone I have over there and turn it into a deep half. And so you just saw me run a one-play touchdown against myself a second ago. But if I run the exact same play here against this deep half, you're going to see that the one-play touchdown will actually not be there this time. You see, we go for it, and it's going to be an easy interception for Emmanuel Mosley. So we'll fall down right there. Now, obviously, are there cons of putting a deep half in the field? Yes, they're not going to defend underneath as well. But we do have another option as well to stop one-play touchdowns. And that is actually pretty basic. In the idea that one play touchdowns take time to develop. So what if we just blitz them? And simply sending a five-man blitz like this can do a good job to stop one play touchdowns. You can see that right here where we probably won't get enough time. Right? Boom. Even right there. Right? We're trying to throw it. We get hit as we throw. 
Now, that's a little bit more of a dangerous way to defend them, but that is a way. And if you have a really good blitz, you can utilize blitzing one-play touchdowns or when, they, when you think they're going to call them. And usually it's going to be a wasted play, a sack, or a throwaway. Usually it ends in a negative play for them. Another way we can do this, though, is a lot of people don't have cover four bombs. They can bomb cover two, they can bomb cover three, but they can't bomb cover four. So if we call cover four here, watch. This right here is a great cover two bomb, great cover three bomb, but cover four just isn't as good. We go to throw it, and I mean, you'd have to get a super perfect throw to get that all the way across your body into the open area. Now, is it impossible? No, it could, but it's just, it becomes unlikely. Let's see if we can do it right here. Let's go back to it. Boom. You see right there, a four-man. I don't have enough time for it to go, so not even sending pressure, just a four-man shed is a great idea. And I, it, it, after that, it becomes basic, right? That's the easiest way to stop these bad boys. You should really never be giving up one-play touchdowns consistently in a game. Once or twice. Once is, like, cool. Twice is, like, dude, you are probably doing something wrong. Even right here, we go for that one-play touchdown. Try having to make a diving catch. If he had a better safety, he might play that as well. It's just tough to make a living like that. You just have to be aware. Cover three is probably the easiest to score one play touchdowns on, whereas cover three with outside corners in deep halves becomes super hard. Cover four is a great alternative as well. Same with blitzing. Under center stretch runs that have an RPO built in are super annoying this year. I'm going to give you an exact setup for how to stop this because this is less about concept and you just need to know this setup. So our coaching adjustments are auto flip off, auto alignment base, Coverage stuff does not matter, so you can do whatever you want right here. We're going to call DB Fire. And now, I know with these stretches what way they want to run. Typically, they want to run away from the receivers. Why? Because they have a bubble to the receiver. So if we just call this and, you know, we let this get thrown, this is going to be a big play. Pretty consistently, it's going to be a big play. So what do we want to do to this bubble? Well, we can actually just man this bubble up. Now, if they do this, let's see. Bang. That's going to be... A, okay, he got picked off. <laughs> got picked off by him, too, so that was even better. But it's going to get played by the man-up guy. But that still leaves the whole stretch run for a big gain as a thing, right? So what do we do about that? Well, it's a very similar concept to what we're doing in the shotgun run defense where if somebody is running the ball and you know what way they're running, you want a user on the backside of that run. And then what I like to do in this one specifically is slant my... D line inside with my user and I'm looking to loop across the formation boom and you can see how I just came totally free and we're gonna make a play now on top of that because I'm a DB fire my outside corner is gonna do a really good job of helping bracket this as well so they go to run it again we're gonna loop all the way across and you see right there we're able to bracket him they might be able to get a couple yards off this depending especially if they're good with the juke move but consistently we're gonna be able to stop it but if you you know you can do all of this perfect Right, but if you don't man up that backside corner, that that is not something that happens. I hope that happens for you. That probably will not happen for you in a game. That you need to man up that that slot wide receiver, or else there's a good chance it's gonna be a one play touch or not one play touchdown, but just a just a big play. Right, boom, hit stick. Really don't recommend hit sticking unless you're recording a YouTube video like this because it looks really cool. Now something I get all the time is that oh my gosh, civil, they're throwing right above my hook curls. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Stop! They're throwing right above my hook curls, guys. If you are ever experiencing a time where they are throwing right above or right underneath a zone of yours, realize that in Madden, we have something called zone drops. So you see right there, I was able to throw above my zone. Now, what if we put our hooks to 15? And I'll even throw in a secret thing, which a lot of you guys probably already know. But if you can, sub in safeties at linebacker, they're going to animate way better. And now, same coverage. I'm running the exact same coverage. But I have safeties at linebacker, and I have my hook curl set to 15 yards now. Now, when I go to throw this... It's going to be a much, much, much tougher throw where 21 is almost right there. Now, you may be saying, Civil, you still fit that throw in. Okay, well, one, that, that's kind of a timing throw, so I was able to fit it in with that. But what if we just put Tracy Walker now in a middle zone like this, a little baby adjustment. We're still running pretty much exactly what we want to run, just a baby adjustment to what we're doing. And now we go to fit that ball in, and now that's not a throw that you can make. See what I'm saying? The zone dropped hook curls are one of my best, best, best friends when it comes to stopping a lot of these routes that seem to get right above or right below my zones, right? We go back to this again. In this case, same idea, same throw. It's going to get picked off by the 15-yard hook. Now, ideally, you can get some taller guys in these hook curls, and they're going to play some crazy, crazy, crazy things for you. 
But the same thing goes for what if they're spamming underneath routes, right? What if they're spamming in routes or drags or something like that? Well, you can just set your hooks to five yards like I did right there. And now if I go to throw this halfback in route, you're going to see that the halfback in route is going to get defended pretty well, right? We throw that. That's going to be tough to fit in every single time. And you know what? Okay, we were able to fit it in right there. What else should we do then? Maybe we should put a hard flat on the outside of him. So then the hard flat is going to defend the short flat. We have a hook curl defending the five-yard intermediate. We go back to the same play now, same coverage almost, just minor adjustment. Boom, throw that. He gets hit as soon as he catches it. Oh, but Civil now over top is defended a little bit. Watch my user right here. This is where you start combining things, right? We're going to start combining some stuff. So, right, we're here. I'm sitting, I'm sitting, I'm sitting. In route's not there. Now I'm at the post route. Now I'm at the post route. Now I'm at the post route. And right there, actually, it was maybe a little bit bad of an example where I underplayed it just a bit. But your user should be a 12th man, a 13th man, a 14th man on the field because your user can go all across it, right? Went underneath for a second. Now we're going up. I got the post. I got the post. I got the post. Boom. A big thing to remember is offense in Madden is overpowered. Almost every single year, offense is going to be way too good, and it's just it's just a fact of the matter. We're always in a losing battle on defense in Madden, but we can do these things and start applying them, and you will win more games. If you want full written out schemes that have full videos like this, very they're a lot shorter, condensed graphics of everything you need to do on offense and defense to win more games. Join over a thousand Madden gamers who are currently a member of my website, civil.gg, and get access to the best skins in the game. Like I said, I've been a top 50 player for the past five or so years. I know what I'm doing in the game. Thankfully, I've spent, I spent way too much time on this game, and you can join a lot of people who also have benefited from that. I think 99% of our members say they have won more games and gotten better from, at, at Madden from being a civil.gg member. So there's that. With that being said, boys, hope you guys enjoyed. If you got something from the video, feel free to subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one.